to another My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have our WWE WrestleMania Night 2 full show review and results. If you guys missed our review of Night 1, definitely go check that out on the channel. It is up right now. We did that last night. Definitely go check it out. But tonight, guys, we are diving into Night Number 2, which I felt had the better card coming in. I was really excited for Night 2 over Night 1, and as good as Night 1 was, would Night 2 be great as well? We will find the hell out, guys. I'm going to run through the entire show, breaking down all the action that happened, giving you my own personal thoughts and opinions on the action and letting you guys know what I thought of it as well as where we might go from here, some predictions, some other things and let you guys know everything that took place at Wrestlemania 37 night number 2 so let's shut the hell up and dive in to the night that was Wrestlemania 37 and see if night 2 was as good as night 1 Alright guys, so Night 2 pretty much opens up with The Fiend taking on Randy Orton. Now, first of all, I gotta get this out of the way. Randy Orton rocking this sick-ass white gear, man. Like, just beautiful-looking white gear. He had, well, I got tagged in, like, 50 different things across Twitter, Instagram. You guys are absolutely amazing for thinking of me when you see sick-ass gear like that, especially in the white, black, and red right there. I mean, I know it's the white gear, but he specifically had white with black and red designs on there, and Randy Orton had on the sick-ass gear. Probably his best gear. He's probably ever worn. It's definitely top five. Nonetheless, man, he was looking fantastic coming out. Alexa Bliss is actually out first. She comes down, strolling down the ramp. We get down to the ring, and there's this giant jack-in-the-box that's got stripes on it. It's got a big-ass handle on it. Alexa Bliss starts cranking it. Out of the box comes The Fiend. Now, shortly before The Fiend comes out of the box, we got him like a vignette of him walking down the hallway as the burnt Fiend, and then all of a sudden he morphs into The Fiend of Past, but he, he has on like the kind of the vest that he was wearing when he got burnt and then his mask is like slightly cleaner it doesn't look the same it looks like it's got like more of a handsome type shape like the the jaw is is more strong it's like more white than dirty he, i mean he looks pretty good but alexa bliss cranks it up he comes up out of the jack-in-the-box very badass entrance the fiend dives off the jack-in-the-box takes out randy orton they battled for a little bit the red lights were on for this match i didn't really care for that bringing that back i did not miss that but randy orton hits a lot of ddts you know they were for a little bit nothing too much it was probably like eight minutes but we're getting close to the end the fiend has you know randy orton up for the sister abigail and then out of nowhere alexa bliss is sitting on the jack-in-the-box with this crown on and this black liquid like symbiote from venom is just spraying out of her head and onto her eyes and her body and she looks like a damn demon and the, the fiend's just standing there staring at her and then rko 123 randy orton wins and pins the fiend at wrestlemania i'm glad to know that the white gear got the win here and i guess you know it's supposed to be like a swerve i guess like alexa bliss is not on his side or maybe he did something wrong i don't know where we go from here i thought at first i was like is alexa bliss and randy orton together what is this but now it just reiterates how stupid the fiend's gimmick has kind of been since hell in a cell 2019 like he looks super badass right they had a gold mine in their hand but booking him like they did at hell in a cell 2019 where he took 56 stomps weapons to the head hammer to the head all this stuff he's kicking out at one and all of this he gets burned alive and then one RKO puts you down. It really makes it look terrible. It makes it look really dumb when they do stuff like that. And that is why I reacted so harshly to Hell in a Cell 2019. And that is why I said The Fiend has been dead for me since then is because of that reason, man. Like, when you book somebody that way, you book yourself into a corner, which they did. And it pretty much shows itself here. It rears its ugly head here. I mean, the match was fun. Like, all the different moments we got, the gear was super sick. But at the end of the day, man, I don't know where The Fiend goes from here. They did disappeared after the match there was some booing i understand the booing it's just a big great question mark like what the hell was that and i i don't know man but i can't even really rate this match that much i like all the moments we got and the gear was just enough for me to give it five stars honestly i'm uh, i'm obviously kidding but i don't know man i don't know where the hell the fiend goes from here but i guess we will have to find out but the fiend loses to randy orton here at wrestlemania love to see it Next up, guys, was the match that I was probably the least looking forward to because, uh, you know, first of all, Night 1, if you watch my Night 1 review, the Riot Squad lost in their effort against Natalia and Tamina, two people that I really just don't see. Like, why would you give them this opportunity? And it really emphasizes why the heck, why would you give them this opportunity when they were going to lose anyway? Why couldn't you just give the Riot Squad the win when they were going to lose anyway? You didn't have to put the tag titles on them. If, they were gonna, if you were going to have Nia and Shayna retain anyway, why not give it to the up-and-coming team that's an 
actual team that's young and thriving in the Riot Squad and Liv Morgan and Ruby Riot. Tamina and Natalya come in this thing. Tamina was missed her cues on a couple of occasions. Nia Jax took forever to come off the top rope. The finish I liked with Shayna Baszler locking in the Coquita Clutch. And then, you know, Natalya's got the sharpshooter locked in. I thought that was pretty cool. However, I just, you know, I just wasn't into it. I mean, I don't like the women's tag titles anyways because it leads to random tag teams being thrown together because you don't have enough women in your division to really build up a tag division. You don't even get really a singles division built up most of the time. So how are you going to build up tag teams with teams that aren't even teams? You're just throwing them together. So, like, tag teams are supposed to be together to go after that gold. Like, you know, that's supposed to be their lifelong dream, not just, oh, we can make tag teams because there's tag team belts to go after. It doesn't mean anything if the titles are worthless. Oh, man. Anyways, Shayna and Nia do retain, which I actually agree with. I'm glad they retained over Natalya and Tamina, but this was just a whole mess between the turmoil match and then the Riot Squad not winning and then this match and then whatever. Not a good start to night number two, man. Two for two matches where we're just left kind of underwhelmed and just not really liking the outcome. So, I mean, I liked Randy Orton winning and the white gear was sick, but as far as like lackluster and underwhelming and what the hell just happened, yeah. Next up, guys, we have my man KO going up with Sami Zayn. Now, coming into this, this is probably, I don't know if it was the one I was most looking forward to, but it was probably top two or three, man, out of the whole Mania weekend, like, by far. Like, I, I love Kevin Owens. You guys know that. He's one of my favorite wrestlers in the world. Going one-on-one -on -one with Sami Zayn, I know their history. I know where they've come from, and I know they're best friends in real life. So, I knew, given their, their past history, the independence, their past rivalries in WWE, I knew that this matchup would be fantastic, and that it was. Of course, we did have Logan Paul thrown in the mix. I didn't know if he would get involved in the match. I didn't know if he would play a huge role in this. He was on commentary. I thought he would be like a manager style. He was just chilling at ringside and I'm going to go ahead and give a huge props to Logan Paul for the role that he played in this entire thing. Not trying to take the spotlight away. I think he did a really good job of being uh, doing exactly what he should have done man. He really made for a great mania moment here tonight. This matchup was super fun. Of course we knew it would. Great power moves back and forth. Great chemistry between these guys the stunners, the end of the match, the Paluva kicks, the super kicks. It was insane, man. What a great match. I definitely recommend you watching it if you missed out on it. After the matchup, however, Logan Paul gets in the ring, is checking on Sami Zayn. They kind of butt heads. He shoves Sami Zayn. Crowd didn't like that. They were like, oh, bro, you don't shove Sami Zayn. I know we hate him, but you don't you don't shove Samuel Zayn. Then Logan Paul holds up KO's hand, and the crowd, you could just feel the crowd, you know, just circulating. They're like, we're going to get it. We're going to get it. Bam! Logan Paul gets stunned by Kevin Owens and I popped so damn hard, man. What an epic WrestleMania moment. I love that. That's uh, how beautiful. Like, I, I don't hate Logan Paul like I used to, but I used to not like the guy whatsoever. But to have one of my favorite wrestlers stun him at WrestleMania and get the win was, was awesome for me. I thought this was great. This totally lifted my spirits for the night right now after the first two kind of wonky matches there. So this was an epic moment. I really enjoyed it, man. Hats off to Logan Paul for doing that and for being a good sport. And he actually sold it pretty well. But this match slapped and I'm happy. Happy KO Mania got the dub for two years in a row now. It may be even more than that. I think it's two years in a row now, though. Next up, guys, we have the U.S. Championship match. Matt Riddle defends against Sheamus. Now, coming in, if you watch my multiple videos leading up to WrestleMania, I knew that this matchup was going to be a potential just slobber knocker banger. I said it would be hella physical. I said that it had the makings to possibly steal the entire weekend. And by God, did these men deliver, man. They beat the hell out of each other for 15 minutes. This match up was super fun, super physical, it, not a wasted moment. You know where you watch a matchup and you're like, you're not, you know, it's like they kind of waste a movement where it's like you don't really care about what happens next or, or what's happening. There wasn't a single moment in this matchup where I wasn't glued to the TV waiting to see what happened next, man. Sheamus and Matt Riddle have unbelievable chemistry and this matchup was fan-freaking-tastic. Sheamus and Matt Riddle beat the hell out of each other. We did have one little slip up. They went for the super white noise off the corner. Sheamus kind of slipped off. I think he could have got it. He just didn't want to endanger Matt Riddle, but I don't even give a damn, bro. He was super professional about it. Didn't even skip a beat. Really fun match. Really physical, man. Matt Riddle goes for the springboard moonsault and gets bro kicked while upside down for the 1-2-3. Sheamus is your new U.S. champion. Absolute banger. Absolute epic match. This is match of the night so far. I loved KO and Zayn, but this matchup was a little step up from that, and it was just so good.
it, bro. Pun intended, Sheamus is your new U.S. champion, which I'm okay with. I wanted Matt Riddle to win, but uh, after Sheamus' year, I think this is well-deserved, and this this was a bona fide banger. You gotta go watch it. Next up, guys, was our Nigerian drum fight for the Intercontinental Championship. Big E defending against Apollo Crews. Now, this is, uh, I think, the second or third match they fought, right? But we do have the element of the Nigerian drums, and I thought this matchup was pretty fun. It was pretty physical. We had kendo stick fights. We had some good back and forth between them. We had an Irinagi on the stairs. It was a pretty, I mean, it was a pretty solid matchup. I think the story of this matchup, though, is the former Baba Tunde, I think. I think he goes by Dabakato or something like that now, or Kato. He came out and pretty much formed an alliance with Apollo Crews and wins the match for him. He comes out, hits a Samoan spike on Big E, hits him with a choke slam. One, two, three, Apollo Crews, new Intercontinental Championship. Now, I'm not really for things like that unless it's like somebody that's already kind of well-known, you know, forming an alliance or turning heel or something like that. So, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it being at Mania like that. But at the end of the day, the matchup was pretty entertaining. I, I liked what we got out of it. Apollo Crews as new US or as new Intercontinental Champion is very interesting. I'm all for it. I like Apollo. I like this character. I figured that he would win because, you know, you don't just get, like, such a drastic gimmick change like this. You better win in a big feud like this on the grand stage because if you don't, you kind of, uh, you know, you kind of fall off a little bit. Like, people aren't going to take your new character seriously. And, yeah, I mean, Apollo Crews got the job done. I'm all for it. And he kind of looks like the figure that I have already here. He's just not, you know, angry or has a long beard. But I know he doesn't have the long tights, but the white and green, it matches the figure. Next up, guys, was a Raw Women's Championship match. Asuka defends against Rhea Ripley, and I've been saying it for a long time now, man. WrestleMania 37 was going to be the WrestleMania 21 equivalent for the women's division as it was for the men's back then with Batista and John Cena. Same thing here, guys. The uh, two women's champions right now are the futures of WWE. You know, they're going to be superstars for a really long time. Bianca and Rhea, congratulations to both of them. I thought this matchup was on the way to being really damn good. I thought it was going to be at the equal level of Bianca and Sasha until like the last couple minutes. It was kind of weird because I thought that the last few minutes of Bianca and Sasha was amazing and um, the beginning was kind of lackluster and it was the opposite for this match. I thought that Rhea and Asuka's match was actually going to be better until the last few minutes. So it's kind of crazy how that happened, but super happy with the result after Rhea got beat last year by Charlotte. I was super excited for her to have this moment here. Uh, I love Asuka. I think she's absolutely incredible, but she's easily, she's, like, she's on her way to being the GOAT probably, but Rhea Ripley did a fantastic job. Super happy for her and the whole women's division here, and hopefully they can just build these ladies up, man. I know that we've had, like, like there's so much good talent. Like, just put it, to, like, book these women well, man. Like, god dang, you got the most talent you've ever had. Do something with it, but congratulations to Rhea. Very good match here. On the way to being a great one, but she gets the win, and she is your new Raw Women's Champion. And for WrestleMania 37 main event, ladies and gentlemen, we had the big dog Roman Reigns defending the Universal Championship versus Edge, the Royal Rumble winner, and Daniel Bryan, who felt that it was necessary for him to be here, Brad. Coming into this matchup, a lot of things going through my brain. I mean, I thought to myself, Roman needs to retain because Roman is just the hottest thing in wrestling right now. In the entire world of wrestling, dude's just unmatchable right now. He's just on a different level than everyone else. Edge wins the Royal Rumble. It's like, you know, 10 years, man. 10 years this story has built up, and he has been absolutely fantastic. It's his destiny to be here. Daniel Bryan has his case as well, developing into this matchup. I was so hyped for this, man. The hype was real for this matchup, and I think it lived up to every bit of it. This was a real main event, man. If you didn't get to see this, you gotta go back and watch it. Just such a beautiful flow, such great intensity. The crowd was into it. I was on my feet the whole damn time, man. This match slapped. I mean, we had epic, epic sequences, great finishers. We had concertos in this mug. We had a spear off the steps. We had power bomb through the announce table. Double freaking cross face, or yes lock, if you will, on the champion. I thought that was amazing. I did not expect a concerto, man. I did not expect two concertos in this matchup, but I thought it was very interesting. When they broke out the concerto, I thought, okay, uh, Daniel Bryan's gonna get back in this match somehow, and then Roman hit the concerto on Edge, and I was like, oh my god, like, they're both gonna get up from this, because usually, me and my brother were talking about it, concertos write you off TV. I was like, well, Daniel Bryan's gotta be gone for at least 10 minutes, and my brother said 10 months, because he's right. I mean, you usually get written off TV with something like that, but Roman Reigns pins Edge and Daniel Bryan. So, one thing that was interesting is that Daniel Bryan got hit with a concerto by Edge, and then Roman hit Edge with a concerto, and then dragged Edge's body over Bryan to pin them both, but the only thing I'm saying is, is Edge's body was over Bryan, and 
and they counted. So technically, Edge has a case that he won the match, right? He, he was over Brian. I know Roman was over him, but he's over Brian. So they both get the pinfall at the exact same time. That's the only way you can really look at that. I'm sure that's what they'll play into for Backlash. We did get announced that Backlash would be next month, so I'm really intrigued by that. I think it's May 16th. I also noticed that it said WrestleMania. There was a graphic above it that said WrestleMania Backlash. I hope to God they don't call it WrestleMania Backlash. It needs to just be Backlash. That's just a whole nother thing. But damn, what a main event, man. I was super excited for it. Roman retains, which I think at the end of the day is the right call. I think that, you know, it was kind of like swervy. They were like, you know, this makes it unpredictable if we put Daniel Bryan here because, uh, you know, it could be this, oh, he's taking the pin and like everybody would be like, you know, kind of on edge there, but on edge, you get it? But seriously though, what a, what a fantastic show and a fantastic main event. I thought that night two was better. I thought night two was better. I saw everybody like clamoring that night one was just this godly, way better show. I don't see that at all. I don't think it was way better in, in, in at the slightest. It had its moments. I mean, what? Cesaro and Seth was good. Bianca and Sasha was good. Bad Bunny didn't do shitty. He did pretty damn good. Outside of that, AJ's match was okay. But in this show, I mean, I thought that there were better matches, I think. I think. I think just the emotion and everything like that. I, I think I liked Night 2 better. And I figured I would. But that wraps up WrestleMania 37, man. Super excited for Backlash, though, to see where we go from here. This main event was excellent, man. Can't recommend you go back and watch it enough. Just what a what a freaking barn burner, man. Just such good stuff there. Roman Reigns deserved this win. I'm glad for it. And yeah, we'll see where we go from here. I know the story's not over. I know Edge is going to continue to work until he gets that title back. So I don't know. I guess we maybe we'll get the one-on-one -on -one next month. But Roman Reigns rides off into the, the WrestleMania sunset as your Universal Champion, which I am very okay with. And I'm glad that they actually did that. So I honestly don't think anybody should dethrone Roman at this moment, man. I just don't see anybody on that level at this, at this juncture. But that does it for WrestleMania 37, man. I hope you guys did enjoy the review. I would love to know down below if you liked Night 1 or Night 2 better. What was your favorite match? Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention, Edge had sick-ass white gear. What am I doing? I forgot. I almost forgot to tell you guys about Edge's gear. He wore a sick-ass white gear, so Randy Orton and Edge looked like they were in matching gear on this night, and it looked beautiful. Roman Reigns didn't change up his gear, which I'm fine with. He's the big-time heel. Daniel Bryan had some sick-ass gear as well, but Edge and Randy Orton won the entire battle on the night. I thought Matt Riddle had a cool Evil Knievel inspired gear. Apollo Crews had a sleeper gear, uh, you know. But yeah, that white gear that Edge rocked was also super fire. Again, it meant a lot to me for everybody to tag me across social media in the sick-ass white gear. It means a lot to me, and uh, that was awesome. But that pretty much does it for our WrestleMania review, man. Thank you guys so very much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy. Again, let me know all of your thoughts down in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys, and I will see you guys in the next video. Don't cross the line like Logan Paul did, and he got his ass stunned for it. You cross